Dear students, welcome. This question was asked in gate 2004 exam and is a two marks question. So it reads, a four stage pipeline has the stage delays as 150, 120, 160 and 140 nanoseconds respectively. Registers that are used between the stages have a delay of 5 ns each. Assuming a constant clocking rate, the total time taken to process 1000 data items on this pipeline will be. Then you can see the following four options. Okay. So these are the stage delays that you are given. 150, 120, 160, 140. And one line mentioned in question is, assuming a constant clocking rate, that means the clock given to these stages is constant. That means we'll have to take a such value of delay, which will allow each of these stages to process the data. That means we must consider the highest delay stage, this one, 160, because from time zero to time 160, we will be pretty sure that each of these stages would have calculated or processed their data because until 160 nanoseconds, this 150, 120 and 140, all these will have uh, must have calculated their uh, or must have processed their data. Okay. So that's how we'll maintain a constant clocking rate by ignoring these three delays and taking into consideration only the maximum delay. Okay. Now you also need to consider these buffer delays. Actually what is going to happen is let me explain in a bit detail, even though I've discussed it in theory lectures, but still I'll repeat. We'll take the total delay as this maximum delay is equal to 160. So we'll consider this maximum delay for all the stages, which is 160 nanosecond and 5 nanoseconds for the buffers or registers between the stages. Because once this stage has calculated or processed its data, it will place the result into this buffer. Okay, here. Okay. The next stage which is going to process the data is this 140 nanoseconds. Okay. It will place the data here. And the next one to process data will be this stage, this one 50 nanosecond stage or stage one. It will place the data here. Then this 160 nanosecond stage will place the data here. Once all of them has placed their data into the buffers, that means 160 nanoseconds are over. Then we'll give a clock to each of the stage saying that just pick up this data from the previous buffer. Okay. And what will happen to data present here? It will be written back into the memory, the right back stage. Okay. Or that actually depends on the implementation. This buffer sometimes may even not be present or sometimes this buffer may be present here. Okay. That's implementation dependent. Anyways, you need to consider the buffer delay only once because all of them will be working in parallel or working at the same time. Now you know this is the delay. Okay, 165 nanoseconds. And what are we required to find? Time taken to process 1000 data items. Okay. Now you know the first data item or the first instruction is going to take four clocks because when the first instruction is fed into the pipeline, each of these stages are empty. The first one is going to take four clocks and all other or all remaining 
instructions will take one clock each that means the next 999 instructions will take one clock each okay that means in total it is one thousand and three clocks one clock here and remaining sorry four clocks here and nine 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 clocks here okay i'll just draw the diagram okay so what's happening is the first instruction will give its result after one two three and four clocks here but the second instruction will give its result here only in the fifth clock similarly third instruction will be completed in the sixth clock that's the benefit of pipelining because once the pipeline is completely filled this you can see in this clock the pipeline is completely filled here each and every stage is working on a different instruction that's benefit of pipelining okay anyways there are 1003 clocks required each clock takes 165 nanoseconds then what is the total time taken the options are in microseconds okay so 1000 clocks into 165 nanoseconds for each clock the total time is going to be okay so this is your answer 165 into 1.003 microseconds this will be something 165 point something very close to 165 microseconds yeah so option is option number b no one uh, it's 160 i have not written options clearly but answer is 165.5 let me verify which option it is. It's option C. I've actually just written the numbers here. Anyways, option C 165.5 microseconds is your answer.